Running back league winners. Welcome to Five Wide. Today's video, we've got four running backs for you that we think will be able to win you fantasy leagues. Um, these guys are going relatively early. I would say, what, first four or five rounds of your fantasy drafts? Or, or you have one that's maybe closer to the sixth? No, Dave Montgomery's like third, third, fourth okay. turn, pretty much. Perfect. So, yeah, all these guys are early. Again, this is important for you, for you guys because if you're looking at running backs early on you got to find these are the guys that are going to provide you plenty of value plenty of touches plenty of opportunity so if you guys enjoyed the video be sure to drop a like subscribe to the channel as well if you enjoyed um, and join our discord links down below in the description um, so let's get to these guys uh, you got the first player for us and you you teased it already yeah so first i got david montgomery who's the running back 18 currently and if you look at this graphic here this beautiful graphic you yes. can see the bears options just terrible. Just, I don't like, it hurts my eyes to look at. No options in this offense. Dave Montgomery is going to get a ton of volume. Him and Darnell Mooney are, might be the only talent in this offense. Yeah. And last season, he missed four games in one of the NFL's worst offenses. He still put up 1,100 yards, seven touchdowns. And in the past two seasons, he's ranked as the RB12 and the RB6 in fantasy points per game. And he's currently going as the running back 18, even though the Bears added basically no one from last season or no one this season. Additionally, <coughs> people talk about his receptions. He's not really a guy who's going to get a ton of receptions like the other running backs we'll talk about in this video. But when him and Justin Fields were both healthy last season, he averaged close to five targets a game. And when Justin Fields wasn't healthy and he was playing, that was like three targets a game. So with Fields, he will be targeted more. Fields dumps it to running backs more. He'll definitely, he won't get a ton of receptions and targets, but he'll improve on it and he'll get enough. And I'm just, I'm taking him purely for the volume in this Bears offense. I think he'll get it. Yeah. Yeah, I think lot. the path to, t to plenty of receiving volume is pretty easy to, to see. Like Montgomery is someone I'm not incredibly high on. I do think Khalil Herbert's going to have an impact on his on his workload. Just Herbert was pretty efficient in his opportunities. Montgomery hasn't been the most efficient, but his work as a pass catcher can't be overlooked. Um, and he's someone I think a lot of people are, are overlooking um, this season, but could be someone that as a result, you, you can benefit from that. Yeah, I mean, I, I completely agree with the Khalil Herbert thing. But over the past two seasons, I found this stat. He has between an 80 to 90% opportunity share between those two seasons, which was fourth in 2020, and he was actually second in 2021. And he has the supposedly the easiest strength of schedule for running backs in fantasy this season, which I don't know how much that means, but if it means anything, he has it. So I think he also had 50 red zone touches last season, which was third in the NFL. So I think there's a lot of potential there for him to win you a leagues. Yeah, it speaks to, again, like you said, he missed time. So that's good. The other th like the thing that, that I'll be curious about is how the offense changes with with the change at head coach, with Getsy at uh, um with Getsy calling the plays, because Nagy, of course, three years with Montgomery, it seems like he he, he really yeah. valued him. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how they the new coaching staff and new regime values him too. Yeah. Uh, let's get to my first player, DeAndre Swift of the Detroit Lions, currently going as the running back eight. I love him. He's my running back four this season. Very, very high on him. This is a guy that I'm going to be trying to get as much as possible. You're looking at where he's going, the guys around him. He's going right at that one, two turn. So if I can get a combo um, in the 12 spot, you guys are looking at it here on the screen uh, and go Travis Kelsey, DeAndre Swift to start my draft. I am going to be pumped. Um, so very excited about DeAndre Swift and what he can do this season in um, the Lions offense. I know Cole, you got him as the RB seven. So uh, we're both relatively high on him. Last year, he's the running back 15, um, was the running back eight in points per game though, was really good in his opportunities. So I'm looking at the workload that he had. So in the games that he played, um, he did miss, you know, he did have 64 receptions, which was fourth in the NFL, um, despite only playing 13 games. So that's very, very valuable to me and, and important to keep a note of because you look at last year, he exceeded 150 carries and 60 receptions. This to me is really important when you look at the history of guys that have done this in the last three years. We're looking at 2021, the guys that exceeded those numbers, Austin Eckler, Najee Harris, Leonard Fournette. That's the RB2, RB3, and RB6. In 2020, the only guy to do this was Alvin Kamara. He finishes the running back one. We're looking at 2019, Christian McCaffrey, did it. Running back one. Alvin Kamara did it. Leonard Fournette did it. Le'Veon Bell did it. These three guys, though, were the RB16, RB13, and RB21. The reason they weren't able to get um, top 12 finishes, RB1 finishes, is touchdowns. And that was the problem 
There's a problem many might look to with DeAndre Swift is how is he going to score? How is he going to meet this RB4 rank that I have for him and why I'm so high on him? And it's going to help with the fact that he has the fifth easiest schedule in the NFL that is based on Vegas win totals. So he's going to be able to prove that he's gotten plenty of opportunity, plenty of touches in, in terms of receptions, which is great. Jared Goff targeted running backs, one of the highest rates in the NFL last year. So I'm incredibly, incredibly high on DeAndre Swift this season because of those reception totals. It's something that can really help you um, when it comes to a high fantasy finish at the running back position. He averaged 4.8 receptions per game and 11.6 rushing per attempts per game for 16.1 fantasy points, like I mentioned earlier. So I'm excited about DeAndre Swift. I think Anytime we're looking for a guy that can win you your league, I think looking at someone that has reception, high recep can give you a high reception total and still get touches, and then we just need them to score. Um, so they got he's got a great floor, and then the chance, I think this year, a better chance to score and give us that huge season and finish as a top five back this year. Yeah, I really like Swift too, and people will start to realize this is kind of the theme of today's show, is running backs who are going to get receptions and targets. Yeah. And Swift, Swift is the definition of that. He'll get Jared Goff is the dump-off machine. Yeah. Swift will get a ton of targets gets receptions he might he might lead the lions in receptions this season yeah 23 and a half percent rate was his target rate to running backs last year for jared goff so yeah. good number so next i got aaron jones who's currently going as the running back 11 near camara and saquon who both have major questions themselves camara with the suspension saquon with injuries and the giants offense mm -hmm. and aaron jones the same theme uh, Deon with DeAndre Swift, targets and receptions for running backs. Last season, he ranked second on the Packers in targets with 65 and receptions with 52, behind obviously Devontae Adams, who is not there anymore. So the, pa the Packers receiving options are pretty bare. You got mm -hmm. Alan Lazard, who's going to be the wide receiver one, who's never had over 500 receiving yards in his career. I don't really know if he can be a true number one receiver. Christian Watson, a rookie out of the FCS. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's going to be able to contribute right away. And Randall Cobb, who's... Actually, this is interesting. How old do you think Randall Cobb is? Uh, 30. Yeah, he's actually only... I thought he was way older. He, oh, yeah. he only is 30, but he still... He seems like he's older. I don't I don't trust Randall Cobb to really do much of anything in this Packers so offense. You, did, you know what? You were off last week. You didn't pay attention to the show. I talked about Randall Cobb as a sleeper. I do... Like, he's... True. He's, 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 his upside's limited. There's a lot of guys here that, that upside is kind of limited. Lazard hasn't been practicing... Or hasn't been practicing yet, so I think he, he's going to take some time. So not a lot of high upside, explosive options. So I think, like you said, Jones has a chance to really be involved as a pass catcher. Yeah, and along that, based off that, I have a bold prediction that I actually think Aaron Jones will lead the Packers in receptions next season because in training camp and their coaches have talked about they're not even they're not just lining him up at running back. Mm -hmm. He's getting snaps at receiver, out wide, and all that, and he's going to get those snaps when A.J. Dillon is in the backfield, which A.J. Dillon will take away from his carries and some of his snaps, but I don't think it's going to be enough to knock him off his current ADP. And you were talking about running backs with, I think, 60 receptions yep. and 150 carries. I mean, he had almost 200 carries last season mm -hmm. and 52 receptions. Yeah. So if he can get eight more receptions, he's in, he's in that, in that tier. tier. And, he, and he missed time, right? He, was, yeah, exactly. he wasn't even healthy all the season. So if his, his projection would have put him towards that, to, to meeting that number. So, and he's someone that can score touchdowns. My problem, my problem actually is the touchdown. Sorry, I don't, I'm not sure. If he can give us the really high level, I think Dylan's going to get a lot of the the inside the five red zone work. Uh, but there's a lot of touchdowns up for grabs with Devontae Adams' departure. And I will say, if he leads the the Packers in receptions, the Packers might not have a great a great season because that means no wide receiver really stepped up to a high high, high level. Yeah, no, that does not that does not mean their season went well. And yeah. lastly, my last thing about Aaron Jones in games in the past two seasons, Devontae Adams hasn't played in. He averages 23 fantasy points a game, which would make him the RB2 last season. Yes, yeah, that's so. a well-documented stat. Well-documented. Yeah. He's oh, yeah. a good one to go to. Uh, last player. Let's get to Travis Etienne. Um, he's currently the running back 20 in consensus. I have him as my RB18. Cole's even a little bit higher on him as, as his RB17. Again, these are guys that we think can explode and have big seasons. So I have him as the RB18, but I do see a path where he can have a really big season. He's going around some running backs that I'm a little bit more skeptical about um, in Antonio Gibson and Brees Hall. Brees Hall and that Jets offense, um, I'm a little bit worried about just um, how efficient it can be. I did see Mekhi Becton got hurt at practice. It looks like he's going to be out for the season. Um, and then Antonio Gibson looking like he might share the workload um, there in uh, in Washington. But this is a guy that I think can lead the league in reception. So I'm really excited about Travis Etienne this season. Um, James Robinson is, of course, back. He's practicing. 
avoided the pup list. Very surprising to see that. But considering the Achilles injury, you know, considering what we saw with Cam Akers when he returned fairly early from that Achilles tear, um, the production and his quality of play is my concern. Really, this this is an injury that you should take 12 to 14 months to recover from. Um, so I'm concerned there. And what I really like with ETN is his familiarity with with uh, Trevor Lawrence. I mean, he, he put up really good numbers with, with Lawrence at Clemson. He averaged four receptions a game um, in 2020 in their last season together. Lawrence had the sixth lowest um, running back target rate last season. And I think a lot of that is credited to the fact he just didn't have you know, a good feel or a good relationship with James Robinson. I think that if Travis Etienne's in the fold as a receive, receiving back um, and getting those snaps, I think he'll be looking to the running back position a hell of a lot more. I'm excited about this offense, this team. If you guys have been watching the show um, so far this this preseason, I'm really high on what the Jags can do. We, we had a video of, of NFL teams that could go from worst in their division to first. The Jags, I think, have a chance to do that because they can take – Lawrence's immense talent and pair it with a better coach. So I think this offense has a chance to be more efficient and score more this season. So if ETN can get those reception totals um, like I think he can and then combine that with some touchdowns, I think he can um, end up finishing as a top 12 back, which I think if he goes from RB20 in consensus to finish as a, as a top 12 back, that's a guy that can win you your leagues. Yeah, he's going like near the start of the running back dead zone pretty much. Yeah. And yeah, he's exactly. someone he's someone I'm fairly confident taking in that dead zone if you need a running mm-hmm. back. The guys going around him, you mentioned Brees Hall and Antonio Gibson. I don't like them at all. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna talk about Antonio Gibson as a bust pretty soon. And Brees Hall, did you see the tweet that he's like the Jets' third string running back or something <laughs> on their unofficial depth chart? Yeah, I also saw Isaiah Spiller was the was the fourth string back for the yeah. Chargers. Look, I've watched Josh if you're concerned about like those depth charts. I've watched Joshua Kelly and Larry Roundtree play. They're not better than I than Isaiah Spiller. So yeah. the unofficial depth charts are, are are good comedy. Yeah, it really it really means nothing. But like, still, it can't be it can't be a good thing. No, it can't because I, I looked at the rest of the Chargers depth chart and everybody that I expected to be in their spots was in their yeah. regular spots. So at the same time, I, I don't know. It's maybe it's a rookie motivation thing. That that would be my guess. I True. guess we're paying True. respects to the veterans. Yeah, and Etn like the guys we talked about last, Swift and Jones, reception target monster guy who can lead the position, could lead his team in receptions and targets, and yeah. could even be in that sixty reception, hundred and fifty carry tier. Yeah, yeah, and we look at you know tra- Najee Harris led the position in receptions. If you're leading the position in, in receptions and targets, you have a good chance to finish inside the top twelve, unless your name is J D McKissick, because I know. Jaden McKissick in 2020 had like 110 targets, but probably I, had like I, 50 carries. Yeah. So again, it's got to be the a pairing with a good floor of carries with receptions, and 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 you can really um, have a great season, like we talked about. So those are our four league winning running backs. Let us know what you guys think of them. Um, if you guys are new, please do subscribe to the channel. We're trying to get to 20,000 subscribers. If you want to see these rankings that we're talking about, I will drop our rankings down below in the description, so you guys can check that out. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and we will see you next time.